Hello and welcome to my channel. This is my portrait of Kate Beckinsale, the British actress, and I'm going to be using Kohino charcoal pencils and silky black pencils. The size of the paper is going to be 9 times 12 inches, and the paper is about 220 GSM. Smooth drawing paper, and the portrait itself is going to be like a vignette. Uh, like most of my portraits, uh, with the bottom part of it fading towards the lower edge. I like to do this to create a more balanced composition and also to be able to focus on the important stuff. Now because she has dark hair, which is slicked back, um, this is going to be relatively easy to draw in charcoal using a soft charcoal pencil. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to lay down the darkest areas first and then use my blending tools to push the material, to push the charcoal powder uh, or the charcoal residue from the darker bits to the, to the highlights, to the lighter areas. Uh, but in this stage I'm not just going to cover this whole area uh, with, with my charcoal pencils, I'm going to pull my strokes in the direction in which the in which the hair is combed back because some of that texture will still remain visible so I I want to create a nice looking a nice looking texture and you can see that I'm leaving the lighter portions in the middle that's where the highlights will be but because her hair is forming a sort of a round shape on top of her head with that middle part facing the light source and being a little bit lighter so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to use my finger to push in the charcoal in the darkest areas because uh, when you use your finger that tends to make the areas you're blending uh, very dark but when you use brushes, uh, it's going to move the material a bit more easily and with a bit more precision, but it's not going to be quite as dark. So in the second stage, I started pushing the charcoal away from the darker areas onto the lighter areas, gently allowing, uh, allowing that to meet in the middle, allowing those brush strokes to meet in the middle and creating some natural highlights with very little effort. So you can see you can you can create a realistic dark here using charcoal in a matter of minutes just uh, by using charcoal pencils and uh, brushes. Later you can refine the uh, re you, you can refine these highlights by pulling some additional areas of lighter value with erasers, either with a kneaded eraser or a pencil eraser, which is what I'm going to use a bit later. So here I'm moving on to the face and uh, while shading, shading the face I'm mostly going to be using these harder pencils, uh, which are silky black pencils, but in some cases I'm also going to uh, use a Faber-Castell black colored pencil which kind of is, is kind of similar to the Kohinoor silky black pencils, maybe a little bit lighter. Uh, but those are the pencils that I'm going to be using most of the time. So I did the earrings here and added a, a, just a little bit of shadow on the part of the earrings which is closer to the face. And now I'm drawing the shoulder area to the left and there's also going to be a bit of shadow here coming from the head. First I blended that uh, with a q-tip to make the skin appear smoother. Uh, because this is a younger pretty woman uh, with a smoother skin I want to avoid having too much texture or too many wrinkles. and um, here I'm doing that shadow. I can draw that shadow using pencil strokes but I can uh, smooth them out or soften them later using a brush. I felt that it was important for me to work on this left side of the body so that I can kind of frame the face and so that it would be easier for me to work on the face itself because 
uh, when I do the hair and uh, the shoulder first that kind of gives me a better idea about how much value I'm going to need when I start shading the face now some people are going to ask how I did the initial sketch I like to use a combination of tracing and freehand I first trace a little bit to establish the position on, of some of the basic body parts or basic parts of the face and then I do a slightly more elaborate slightly darker sketch using freehand uh, before I start shading the larger areas I like to put in some of the darkest bits like for example the darker the darkest elements of the eyes like the eyelashes and the eyebrows the pupil and the iris and you can see that I left a little bit of white space for the re for the reflection in the eye so one, one of my favorite ways of creating areas of lighter value is by reserving the white space that's probably the best way you can do it if you can do it just not cover it with any material with, a, with pencils but sometimes that's difficult to avoid depending on what you're trying to draw uh, so sometimes you have to use erasing uh, I shaded the rest of the eyeball as well because the the white of the eye can't remain completely white it looks a little bit dark now but once I start shading around it and once I shade the rest of the skin around the around the eye and the whole eye socket area the white of the eye is going to appear a lot whiter but it's still going to appear a little bit darker than the reflection in the eye and another thing about the reflection uh, by the way I'm moving on to the mouth now and the mouth itself was probably the most challenging bit here in this portrait and I'm going to talk about why in a few minutes but let me just say a few words about the eye and, the, and that catch light, that reflection in the eye so one of the things that I don't really like about many reference photos is that that highlight, that reflection in the eye is going to be in, in the very middle of the eye it's going to be covering most of the pupil so one of the things that I like to do is just move that reflection ever so slightly to one side in this case I moved it a little bit to the right so that more of the pupil would be visible and so that we could re retain more of that contrast between the pupil and the iris and the pupil and the reflection and that way you get a more natural looking eye that kind of looks more expressive I think so um, here on in the forehead area I added some of these smaller baby hairs growing closer to the to the top of the forehead and then I started shading the forehead area uh, I am shading this holding my pencil sideways and uh, allowing the broader side to shade and I'm mostly using a tapered stroke and that will create some texture but I can soften that texture by using my blending tools either a q-tip or a soft brush and that way I can establish some sort of a base tone or base value and I can work from there one of the things that I also like to do is I like to push a little bit of charcoal residue from the darker areas onto the lighter areas but here I had to be careful with that because uh, the hair itself is pretty dark so I can't really push in too much charcoal onto the face because uh, the forehead area would end up looking too dark and obviously the top part of the face needs to be a bit lighter than the bottom part because it's closer to the light source um, and the light source in most cases is coming uh, from above or at least it's coming more from above and cast and most of the shadows are being cast downwards under the nose under the lower lip under the jaw and the chin etc I like to frame the face by going around it drawing some of these darker areas like for example uh, the hair around the ear and I also had to make sure that the, that the very edge, the left edge of the face is pretty clean even though it's a little bit darker I had to make sure that it's clean and that I, I have a nice clean edge between the background which is white and plain white in my case and of course the face, the face itself 
If I don't like the shape, I will modify it a little bit later. And I also added some flyaway hairs on the hair itself, on the outline of the hair. She's, she has kind of a small and uh, narrow nose, so it's important to shade the sides of the nose properly so that it doesn't end up looking too flat or too wide. And the reason why I said that the lips, uh, which are a little bit lighter now and I still have a bit of work to do on them, the reason why I said that the lips would be uh, one of the most challenging things about this portrait is because um, I, I was kind of struggling to get the exact shape that, uh, that I saw in my reference photo. I'm going to put the reference in the description if you want to check it out. And there are also a couple of interesting things about the reference and the, and the way I adapted it to my composition. But I think uh, Kate um, has had some minor cosmetic surgery and I think that her lips may have been one of the things she has done. You know, interestingly, I uh, drew another, I, I did a few portraits of another actress for the uh, uh, for the same customer and uh, the the other actress was uh, Rona Mitra another very pretty kind of slim actress it doesn't exactly look like a key back in sale but there are some similarities and she has very similar lips I believe that the same the same person who did Kate's lips probably did uh, Rona Mitra's as well. Uh, but Kate, of course, is a very pretty woman, regardless of the of the minor cosmetic surgery that she has done during her career. Um, but but one of the challenges uh, with these actresses is that uh, when you study uh, different reference photos, and I often like to check out different reference photos, is that their appearance will often change, and not only because of age, but because of the cosmetic surgery as well. So I may be wrong, I may be <laughs> accusing this poor woman of having had cosmetic surgery, but uh, I, I believe that uh, her lips are not natural. And uh, these are the sort, sort of things that sometimes give me problems. Uh, but like I said, she is a very pretty actress and uh, she has been in some very, very popular movies, some, some very big movies. One of the first movies I saw her in uh, I think was uh, an adaptation of the Shakespeare Shakespeare's comedy Much Ado About Nothing and I liked it um, and uh, then I saw the, the, there was this romantic comedy Serendipity and then there was some action movies uh, The Underworld the vampire movie and and what else? And she was also in the Pearl Harbor movie, which was a like a big blockbuster World War Two movie, which wasn't that great in my opinion. Didn't really like it that much. It was visually exciting, but um, I liked the I liked the more recent Midway movie much better. So a very famous British actress who's been in some really big movies. I'm going to do a couple of portraits of her. I'm just going around the eyebrows here, uh, taking away a bit of value in some places to make that part of the face a little bit more prominent because uh, what, what you want to do with your erasers and I, I'm using a coquin or pencil eraser which you can use like a pencil what you want to do with, with your erasers you basically want to use them like you would a pencil you use a pencil to draw areas of darker value or darker shapes and you, you use your erasers to draw lighter shapes and you need both of those approaches 
to create a range of value and to explain the shape of the face to the viewer. So I already took away a bit of value from the uh, top left area above the, uh, above the left eyebrow which needed to be a little bit lighter and I'm probably going to do a little bit more around the cheekbones when the time comes. So here I added a bit more hair here on the right and I'm slowly moving on to shading the right side of the face and uh, working around the eyes uh, trying to achieve a little bit more likeness and trying to define the shape of the face. One of the things that I always found uh, a bit challenging when drawing, um, when drawing younger, prettier women was understanding the shape of the face, especially when the face is mostly turning towards you. When it's turning away, when it's a three-quarter portrait or a, uh, or a side view, it's a little bit easier. But this one is mostly turning to the front and in those cases it can be a little bit harder to both understand the shape of the face uh, from a single reference photo and to explain that shape to the viewer. So here I'm using my pencil eraser to and, and a kneaded eraser as well to take away a bit of value from some of the parts of the face which I felt needed to be a little bit lighter and a bit more prominent. I'm pulling some highlights on the forehead area, on the lips, uh, above the eyebrows and even in this shoulder area to the left. And slowly, very slowly, uh, I'm starting to achieve a bit more likeness but this was a very, very gradual process. I've learned to be patient when drawing these portraits of prettier women uh, because their faces are so smooth, the lighting is usually strong and there's always a certain amount of makeup and it can be a little bit difficult to understand what's going on. But the important thing is uh, not to panic and to shade all parts of the face uh, patiently and let them come together and eventually, hopefully, uh, it will look like the person that you're trying to draw. Now as I'm moving closer to the, to the, uh, to this uh, other shoulder area on the right, I want to say a few words about the composition because uh, if you look at the reference, uh, uh, it was a little bit tricky to isolate um, isolate her onto the paper here and create a vignette because of her body position. So sometimes when you're trying to isolate a person uh, onto a two-dimensional uh, drawing, you can you have to remove some elements of the reference photo and um, that can maybe uh, make the whole whole body look a little bit awkward and maybe even a little bit disproportionate so I had to be careful about which parts of the body and the shoulders I wanted to include and uh, I also had to make some smaller adjustments to that. But I did want to create a vignette because I prefer drawing vignettes when I do portraits. And here I'm going around the edges and uh, working on them around the edges of the hair and I worked on them with a tutillion and soften the edges a little bit. The reason why I'm doing that, and normally I insist on having clean edges, but uh, when you have, uh, when you're drawing hair, there's going to be a lot of these flyaway hair, small soft hairs, and you can't draw every single one of them. So in order to imitate the appearance of that hair, you can use your blending tools to soften the edge a little bit, and that can create an illusion like there's a lot of smaller hairs in there. 
so you have to know when to break your rules to create a certain realistic effect. So I'm moving on to the dress, or at least to the part of the dress that is visible here. I'm just going to add some small details to it, like a few wrinkles here and there, a few, uh, a few of these folds, and shade, shade around them a bit before I move on to the shoulder area and uh, start wrapping things up. Uh, I'm just shading a little bit with, a, with my brush, adding a bit more value in between these folds. And adding a bit more value overall, and then pulling some gentle highlights using a pencil eraser. But like I said, I want the lower part of that to fade towards the bottom of the paper. So now as I'm working on this shoulder here, you can see what the problem is uh, when you try to, uh, to isolate the person um, or, or isolate uh, and remove some parts of their body. Uh, it's, it looks a little bit like, like she's uh, slouching a little bit. So uh, I decided to make some changes eventually. I changed the position of her shoulders a bit and I added a bit more hair behind the behind the other shoulder. Here I'm adding a few more details to the eye because I felt that uh, the the eyelashes were a little bit longer and there's there was a little bit more makeup around the eye. And I'm making some minor, minor modifications to the lips which are starting to look better and more realistic. and uh, just uh, putting down some finishing touches on the face. Now here in this area of the neck, uh, the neck uh, kind of made it look like her posture was a little bit bad. Like I said, that's a, that, that's a result of me trying to isolate this part of the portrait to create a vignette. So I had to make some changes. I simply added a bit more hair here to create more contrast so that I could bring out the uh, the shape of the neck and make the neck appear a bit uh, longer and a bit more slender because that's what her neck really looks like. And I think uh, this, uh, this improved the overall appearance of the portrait and made, made the, the position of, the, of her body a little bit less awkward. These are just some of the things that you have to pay attention to um, when you're putting down some of the finishing touches and trying to assess uh, what your whole portrait looks like. I'm putting down some of these finishing touches using those silky black pencils and uh, just um, trying to decide uh, where to put my signature. I did a lot of cleaning up with a kneaded eraser because there was a lot of charcoal because of the hair. And here I did also didn't like this area, uh, the, this part of the face to the right, the cheek area. I felt that it was too flat and I felt that her face was a bit narrower so I started dabbing on that or, or pushing a bit more charcoal towards the lip uh, area in the lower part of the face to make that a bit darker and I think it worked because because her fa face is a little bit thinner a little bit narrower in that part so I think this this final touch improved the overall likeness and the appearance of the portrait I want to thank you for watching don't forget to check out my other videos subscribe give me a like and comment and I'm going to see you in the next one Bye for now.